Hey lads, I just got a new box in the mail today and I thought it'd be a little fun to do a little what's in the box type of video. Though, admittedly, with the the title and description will probably already reveal what it is to you, but uh, an unbox what's the worst that can happen with an unboxing video, am I right? So this box was delivered to me by my friend Visionary126, you guys may know him as Thomas Presley on Twitter and such, so I'll leave a link to his channel description. And this is actually something that's a unit that I've been kind of been wanting for a while just because of how unique it is, but I don't think I should say any further. Let's just get to the unboxing, shall we? The tip I have is to be as careful as possible when cutting boxes because the last thing you want is to cut yourself. Look at that. It's a Lionel 58 Great Northern Rotary Snowplow. Always one of my little guilty pleasures from the post-war era. I'm sure some of you are wondering why I wanted this unit in particular, and I wouldn't exactly blame you for questioning it because I actually used to be scared of this unit as a kid. And I'm sure you're wondering what the story behind that is. Like, it's a scene from Isle of Toy Trains 2 that used to really catch me off guard whenever it showed up on screen. But, I don't know. Sometimes I'm a fan of being scared at times, and I mean, I'm not scared of it anymore. I think it's kind of fascinating of how strange it looks like. The strange Rory Snowplow, the, the blade, I mean, that's, that's, that's almost hypnotic swirling when it moves. The fact that it's Great Northern, I love Great Northern, too. It's just such an intriguing unit, and I honestly, I think it will really stand out. I'm sure it'll be a head turn when I bring it to the Line Agrero Club of Milwaukee, for, that's for sure. The nice thing is I've already tested it on my Christmas tree this year. This engine does run, or should I say unit, I keep <laughs> calling it a locomotive even though it's technically a motorized unit as Lionel termed it as, but it's in pretty good condition for the most part. Might need a little bit of extra lubrication since it did make a lot of sparks and at least Thomas was honest about this, but it's not in perfect condition. You may have noticed that the this is a slightly different color from the main cream color of the cab, the little sill in the window. These broke off really easy for I've been told when kids handled it back in the heyday. That's probably why I, what happened here and I believe there's this he mentioned it was before he got it but this has obviously been repaired. Same thing on the other side too. Another thing I know is that the little another thing I know is that little hatch that keeps the blade secured to the to the locomotive or unit seems to be broken a little bit which causes it to kind of come loose like that but it doesn't seem to affect its performance and maybe I could try to figure out a way to fix that but other than that it's in pretty con condition and here's reverse unit as well so it can go forwards and backwards this is also I got mentioned this is my first unit that's not steam and I um, feel like that's kind of a breath of fast share. Hopefully it won't be the only one. I've been th been looking at Mark's 1998 switchers and the Lionel 23A, which I could be wrong but I believe that's the post-war Milwaukee Road F7 on eBay. Who knows, maybe I'll get some of the Santa Fe F3s as well. But we'll see in the future but for now here's my newest addition to my old gates roster and without further ado I better show it to you guys running at the LRC. So let's go.